Yo, it's me, Marshall Bruce Mathers III. Here, don't, there's spoilers in this episode of the Broskies Discuss, so if you want to play Nocturne, go and buy it. It's 40 bucks right now. Now I'm going to say the F slur. What? No, I'm going to... Welcome, everyone, to the second Broskies Discuss. Finally, after... Well, it's been like a year. Over a year. Cause, wait, 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 what? Uh, May, probably? Because the first Broskies Discuss was on... um. Persona 5 Royal. Persona 5 Royal. But now the Broskis finally have feel enough passion about something to talk about something again. The Scramble Cast will happen. It will happen. This Scramble Cast could save lives. Don't drop it. I mean, we've kind of talked about it on Twitter and stream, but not really. I don't know if people really know about it. Uh, we played Persona 5 Scramble. Uh, we were going to record I something on it. And then we did I still have my feelings. I still know how I feel about it, even though it's been months. Yeah, and then so we can still do it. Jack, Zach have, finally he, finished. Yeah, Jack a finished it, ago. and we're like, you know what, Jack? We'll just do it with you since we waited so long. <laughs> now yeah. it's August when we're recording this, but we we talked like last week, like, bro, let's just record this shit. Episode three or four of Broski's Discuss will be Scramble. The next episode will either be The World Ends with You or Scramble. Okay, those are the next two episodes lined up. Okay, so we yeah. promise that will happen. But for today, we have another Shin Megami Tensei property. This one's not Persona. This is Shin Megami Tensei Nocturne, specifically the HD remaster. Me and Dylan both played it. And now we will discuss our deep feelings about this RPG from 2003. Now, the difference with this and the first book you discussed, um, we took time after... <laughs> after playing this game it's been like a month probably when we recorded royal it was like the day after matt beat it so yeah so we were all like oh my god it's the best game ever oh my god it's so cool Jack now like <laughs> now Jack we can look back and see there are a lot of flaws with persona 5 Royal, specifically yeah. kazumi is underdeveloped uh the grappling hook wasn't that cool, past Matthew and past Dylan. It was, it's like Jack fine. Jack wasn't doing He's like, you guys, you guys went up. He made like a chart. I'll put it on screen. And it's like, Persona 5, jump over a gap. Persona 5, oil. <laughs> grappling hook over the gap. He, he was giving us such a hard time on it. But we were still right about the, the last arc. And that yeah, is, we still, like, we awesome. still do like the last arc. Again, no spoilers. It's just, we're being vague. Yeah. The last arc is yeah. good. Kasumi a little underdeveloped. But but let's talk about Nocturne Yeah, now. Nocturne So now. it's been like a month since we both finished Nocturne. This was our first time playing Nocturne. This was both our first time yeah. playing any SMT property or finishing any SMT property that wasn't a Persona game. I think and we I both have in... the same story. Uh, we, we both played Persona 4 first. Well, you kind of played a bit of 3. But I like played four Persona was, 3. 4 was the first one you actually like played through and beat. And yeah. I think like both of us all the time were like, I want to play uh, SMT. And I personally, I was like, I want to start with Nocturne. I want to play Nocturne. I also want to yeah. start with Nocturne. Nocturne but it's just like, I don't know, too. there's so many games to play and I'm just like, I'll get to it. So the remaster is like the perfect time to play it. Yeah, the, when they announced the remaster, that was really cool. We have our reactions on recording in one of our videos, in one of our reaction videos. 2003, a cult classic was born. Nocturne? Nocturne on Nocturne. Switch. Oh wait, no, maybe it's five. Oh, wait, you're freaking right. Do you think it's Shimagari Tensei five? No way, no way. No, nah, it's probably for Nocturne. Nocturne. They're only showing Nocturne. Nocturne E3, maybe? What? Oh, <laughs> that's fucking big. <laughs> what the no. fuck? Um, that was a really good opportunity because we wanted to play Nocturne, and now this remaster came out, and. I mean, we never played the original, so we can't comment on, on it too much, but yeah, it's kind of a weak remaster. They don't really add much, but the quality of life changes are good, and the voice acting in this game is really good. I really like the voice cast. Um, Isamu and Hajiri, uh, those are great voice actors that I like. Um, whoever voiced Chiaki did a great job. Hikawa, the teacher, they all did good. They all did really good. Thor is Billy Komet. Come on. That's, that's all, it's all really good. We don't really have a format for the kids. I don't know. We had like a whole format for Royal. Kids were like, we got so much to talk about. We got to talk about the original and then we got to talk about Royal and then we got to talk about future. Yeah. What's going to happen after the ending of this game? But this one, it's just like, we're, uh, we're just going to talk about it. 
It's gonna be random. Yeah, they were destroyed, and you might hear like people say, "Oh, Nocturne has no story." Yeah, I wanted to talk about that a bit. Yeah, I we'll get to it in a bit, but like they they were destroyed. It's not like the gameplay is like your main focus, but they're just story, and I liked it. Well, buddies always be like, "There's no story in Nocturne," like bro. Because they're, they're probably comparing it to, like, Persona or yeah, Visual Novel. Like Persona. And they expect, like, a, a big... This is, like, the story in most video games. Most video games have a story, and this is just, like, them. There's some story, but it's mostly focused on gameplay. I think the story in Nocturne is good. Like, the lore is, like, interesting, and it's, like, a nice atmosphere. It's very good. It is a good story. Don't undercut the Nocturne story, because this shit is heat. It's cool. I really like it. I like the Nocturne toy. It's pretty cool. Riley! Stop licking Amelia Watson! What? She always licks my Amelia Watson pillow. Okay, back to the game. Yeah. Let's talk about... You want to talk about gameplay next? Mm, yeah. I mean, there's not very much to say on the story. It's cool. Yeah. The, well, obviously, there's like uh, a bit of... this kind of like world in the gameplay. There's... How many paths? Like four? There's there's five endings and four real... No. Yeah, that's true. There's six endings. Because there's true demon, and then there's the two neutral paths. Demon and freedom, and then the three um, reasons. Um, I forget their special fancy names, but you know, Isamu, Chiaki, Hakawa's reasons. The region of Shijima, Musubi, and Yosuga. Yosuga, that's the last one. So, let, let's rank the reasons. Neither of us have gotten all the endings, but, like, you know, we know they're, their reasons they're not and stuff. Too, too different. Just the region yeah. wins and they do like a cutscene. So, the region yeah. of Shijima is Hikawa's region. I'd say Shijima is probably the worst reason, in my personal opinion. Here's why. Because while Chiaki's reason, Yosuga, is horrific and terrible, at least it doesn't completely erase the world, and there's still room for change within the reason, you know? Now, if I've told you this before, it, man. I've told you this yeah. before. It. I want you to look at him. Okay, I'm now, looking at Hikawa. You see, you see that hairline? Yeah. I'm sorry, Hikawa, but ain't no reason ain't fixing no that reason. hairline. For real, bro. What the fuck his barber doing? His barber should have been like, oh, I fucked up. We're going to have to go bald. Because what the fuck is that? <laughs> what the fuck is that? His barber needs to be fucking killed. I, his, you know what? He probably did all this shit with the fucking, uh, what was it called? The thing. The conception. He probably did the conception just to eliminate his fucking barber off the face of this fucking planet. Because what the fuck is that hairline, bro? Come on. Be real. Yeah, his reason is the worst, too. Yeah, definitely it, the... If we're ranking them, the lowest. So I guess we'll, we'll go... Just move to a second place, could we both agree? Yochiga is Chiaki's ending. Or er, reason. Chiaki is a bitch, and her reason is horrific. Her reason would, like, what? Just only the strong stay? Yeah, only the strong Which, can survive. Now, I, I want to point out, she's saying this shit when she's, like, defenseless. Before she gets, like... Yeah, before she gets her epic shit. demon powers. She had no powers. She's like, we only need the strong. Bitch, what? Bitch, you're not the strong. Bitch, I have fucking... I have war cry and heat wave. I will fucking obliterate you off the face of this planet if you be talking shit. And then, they later in the game, she goes and kills all the mannequins. And they made up their own racial slur for them. What the fuck? Nah. The world of only the strong. World of the racism. What the fuck? But at least it doesn't completely erase, like, the entire face of the planet. So, it's better than literally nothing, which would be Shijima. So, Yosuga is second place. Definitely. Or, and then... Out of the main reasons, yes. Yeah, out of place. the region, the main three regions, we we think Musubi... It, is that how you say it? Musubi? Yeah, Musubi, Musubi is the best for two reasons. Reason number one. If you pick Musubi, you don't have to fight the boss Noah, which is the worst oh, boss shit, in the fucking I forgot. game. Noah's such a bad boss. I forgot about that shit. Fuck that piece of shit boss. Literally the worst in the game. It was cool to fight Isamu and stuff, and Noah was like a cool, creepy design, but fuck that boss fight. That boss fight sucks dick. Um, I mean, also, Isamu's was... reason is just, I have depression. <laughs> yeah, Isamu's reason is kind of like you know, Persona 5 Royal, the ideal reality 
It'd be yeah. like everyone has their own ideal reality. It's just kind of creating your own world. Like it's like it's like if you were lucid dreaming. Like you're just chilling, and they're like, "Man, I wish I had a big booty bitch right now." Oh and then, shit! Big booty bitch appeared. What the fuck? And her ass is jiggling all over the place. Oh, but she got no titties. I wish she had big juicy milkers as well that were lactating all over my face. So Boom. true. So that's the best reason by far. It doesn't hurt anybody. We all get to have whatever we want. We're both in agreement that if we had to shoot a region out of the three, we would do Mushibi. But, but we didn't. Lol. Yeah, that's that's just of the main three reasons. There's other endings, okay? So there's True Demon, which is the fuck everyone, I'm gonna kill God reason. Um, Kind of cringe. I'm not a big fan of Lucifer or Satan. I was born and raised a Christian. So I think that guy's kind of mean, honestly. See, so I don't, I don't really know if saying like the final boss of two demon is Lucifer being a spoiler, but like the game called Lucifer Call in some reason. So yeah, I, everyone knows the old yeah. guy's fucking Lucifer. It's kind of hard to like spoil Nocturne. Like again, the story's cool, but like stuff we say, like it's not gonna affect you. Uh, I game. guess we should add in the beginning like a warning that yeah, obviously we're, we're gonna spoils be, the like, Nocturne. Minor spoiler. Because we forgot the game. to say. The first episode of Broski's Disgust, we were like, oh, spoilers for Royal. You should know, people should know that Broski's Disgust is a spoiler-heavy show. It's yeah. just us dumping our fucking feelings. So, yes, spoilers for Nocturne, but Nocturne... It, it, we're not even really spoiling that much I of mean, the story. I mean, when we do it, The World Under Fear, we'll definitely have, like, a no-spoiler yeah. section. But Nocturne, it's... Sorry, yeah. but we're just gonna spoil it. Yeah, um, I mean, just... Don't watch this one if you want to play Nocturne. I mean, and I do recommend you play Nocturne. They're it's like a good 12 game. minutes in already, but, but whatever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, just put a warning at the beginning, Dylan. I can record a warning if you want, or you can, whatever. But, um, or you can just have a robot say it. You can have Ben Shapiro say it. Who knows? You can have Eminem say it. Have Eminem say it. All right. So, it's Wait, me, you Eminem. Just do it right now. Make your warning right now, dude. Live on the air. No, but yeah, there's robots that say I'm an, uh, where it's yeah, Eminem. Yeah, but your voice is funny, bro. Yo, it's me, Marshall Bruce Mathers the Third. Here, don't. There's spoilers in this episode of the Broskies Discuss. So if you wanna play Nocturne, go and buy it. It's forty bucks right now. Now I'm gonna say the F slur. What? No, Eminem. See, and now people are gonna get to the point in the podcast and be like, "That was just thing at the beginning before. of the episode." That was the beginning of the episode. They, wow. they just play it again. Wow. Wow. So yeah, there you go. There's just yeah, a little warning. tangent there, but. Yeah. Where were we? Oh, True Demon, True Demon. Yeah, True Demon. Uh, the True Demon's, uh, it's, it's fun. It has the most content. Um, some of the Kalpas of, uh, the Labyrinth of Amala can fucking suck my fat dick. Some of them are pretty bad. Actually, the Labyrinth of Amala fucking sucks dick. But the boss, th the extra boss fights with the Menorah are cool. I like fighting all the skeletons. Getting to talk to Lucifer and the lady. I like the young lady more than the old lady. I'd fuck her. I'd fuck this shit out of her. You don't even know what yeah. she looks like. You can see her mouth. What'd that mouth do? What'd, What'd that mouth do? do? And then at the end of that ending, you beat Lucifer and he's like, you've proven yourself to me, let's go kill God. And then you and all the demons just start walking towards heaven, I guess. I don't yeah. fucking know. And then the I game mean, ends. Again, Nocturne has like a, a cool little story that isn't super relevant, but it's, it's still cool. I think it would be cool if you could fight YHVH, but I mean, that's more of a... That that's something I should have told them in two thousand and three when I was yeah. one year old. If but, I wanted uh, that, Nocturne is just like badass. Demi, what Demi yeah. Fiend, real quick before we get to the last ending. Demi Fiend is just a cool protagonist, and he's badass and beating down. Watch Lucifer. Mojo. Even Watch Mojo knows Demi Fiend is base because they put him second place above most of the Persona protagonists in their top ten SMT protagonists. Yeah, video. and they put now, Joker, they put in Joker top. above Demi Fiend. But we all know Watch Mojo is fucking stupid. That's why the Broskis are making their own top ten videos. Stay tuned. Demi Fiend probably he's one of the coolest. You know Arkami's the best SMT pro tag because he's sure. got all that she's personality like in the anime character. and the fighting game. But Demi Fiend's like second place just cause he's fucking badass as fuck. And some of his dialogue options are awesome. Like, I know there's one dialogue option where this, this orc's like, beat it. And then he's like, um... Michael Jackson. Sorry. Yeah. And then, and then Demi Fiend's like, oh, how about I kick your ass instead? Come on. Demi Fiend's like the only protagonist in SMT that swears. It's awesome. Demi Fiend based as fuck. Yeah, we, we might guess about him again on. later, but... 
The last ending. The ending we both got. The be- the best ending. The ending that's the most morally correct in both our opinions. So there's there's regular demon, which is penis, but then there's the other neutral ending, freedom, where you send the world back to normal and everyone's happy. It's like the conception never happened, and no one remembers it except you and your teacher. So cool, so awesome. That's the ending. Me and Dylan's first playthroughs, we both just went with how we feel. We didn't look at a guide, really. And we both ended up with Freedom. So, Freedom is a great ending. Good ending. Very nice. Very cool. What do you think about it, teacher? Uh, I would, I would fuck. I'd have sex. Rough, rough, oh, okay. raw sex okay. with her. Oh, 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 you didn't have to go that far. Yeah, I mean, I'd like, have, I'd like, I'd I put like three fingers in the pussy. Oh, um, this yeah, is a, three, this is a, this three, is a podcast sorry. about Nocturne the game. Not oh, sorry, sorry, what sir. You... Uh, gameplay, gameplay. Um, when I went in, I was like, I was not expecting the gameplay not be very good because Persona Three came out three years after Nocturne initially, and the gameplay in that game lacking definitely compared to Persona Four and especially Persona Five. But Nocturne but apparently, older, Atlas, and it just Atlas better. just. Atlas just fucked it at some point in the early 2000s because Nocturne has a much better gameplay system than Persona 3. Like, on par with Persona 4, I'd say. Maybe even a little better. The press turn system in this game is, like, you can visually see your turns and stuff and, like, you get more and more turns. It's 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 really cool. And then, like, the enemies have their own press turn and... The enemies didn't use instant kill skills nearly as much as they do in Persona yeah, 3, ex- which was really the nice. The thing with Persona 3, real quick, um, it, just play it on easy, it is just not fair. Yeah. Like, you'll you'll be, like, two hours into a target run, and you see something you'd Mudo, and you're like, <laughs> if that killed me, I'm going to. Just the photo of the bulb orb staring straight ahead when you lose two hours in Tartarus to yeah, instant I, death on Makoto. Would- was pretty solid. My complaint is a little nitpick about like sometimes random encounters are just straight annoying. Like you take two steps and you get it. Yeah. But mm. um, but he say Nocturne's hard as fuck. But um, I don't know. I it was pretty smooth sailing on normal difficulty. I mean, the only I would boss say fight I really struggled with was Beelzebub. Was really hard for me. I would say it, it is a, a hard game, I would say, but not like Maybe we're super, just smart. Super Maybe we're just good at SMT. I, yeah, I didn't both, have too much problems. It was very smooth sailing for both of us on normal. I remember... Uh, we haven't done hard, but... I was very um, scared to fight Mott because I saw a video. I, most Nocturne fans probably know. It's like Mott repeatedly giving himself turns and just wins in one turn. So yeah. when I finally saw Mott, I'm like, oh my god. I'm like, I beat him for a try. <laughs> yeah, I just, I, I'm gonna be real. I cheated a little bit on Mott. I just Googled what his weakness was. It was electric, both Demi Fiend, and I had a party member that had electric skills at the time. We just completely obliterated him off the face of the fucking planet. Mott was so, like, the easiest boss of that dungeon. It was crazy. Even the final boss, Kagatsuchi, was, like, no match for me. The only boss I struggled with was Beelzebub. At the end of the Labyrinth of Amala. Fifth fifth Kalpa. I died to Kagasuchi the first time because I was buffing everything except my defense, and then he used like this one move that just instantly killed me. I'm like, oh, I should buff my defense too. I constantly spammed buffs and debuffs. So that's why I think mine was such smooth sailing, because all SMT aficionados would be like, Nocturne is easy if you just spam buffs and debuffs, which is true, because that's what I did. I always had a party member that had, like, each party member, like, the first 10 turns of every fight would just be me buffing, maxing out my attack and defense, and, like, lowering their defense and evasion rate, and then I'd just obliterate them in, like, three turns after that. That was, like, every single boss fight for me, and it was very satisfying to do. Yes, yeah, speaking of party members, Rido and Dante. So, something new about the Nocturne rematch is this is the first time in America we could play as Rido. Because we only had Dante before, right? Yeah, we now, only had Dante. The thing with Dante is $10 DLC. Now, I want to talk about the DLC oh, real quick. Oh, no! $10, ridiculous. But let's talk about the other DLC. The DLC that helped you um, grind and get money more. Because, like, if you were to, like, grind to level 99, you say goodbye to, like, 40 hours of your life. Not really, but it takes forever, right? 
No, no, I think it would be 40 hours, yeah, legitimately. Could, it, it, to max out all the Magatama without buying that DLC, that will probably be like 40 hours, yeah, maybe like, more. It, it took a while, like a couple hours to even grind oh, in my God. just to get all the Magatama using the new DLC. And it's like seven bucks for the DLC. We both You're got it. You're required to buy this but DLC if you thing. want the platinum. Oh my god. This should barking. just be quality of life. It should not be seven dollars DLC. This should have been something that you unlock after you lo- when you load your save after being Kagatsuchi or something. Yeah, something like that. So you can't like abuse it during the game. But like post game, yeah. th- there's no freaking reason that I-, I have to pay seven bucks for this. I didn't buy Dante. <laughs> I'm not I didn't buy Dante either. Ryo's badass as fuck too. He's voiced, as I mentioned earlier, I like Billy Commence. Billy Commence voiced Ryo in this, so it's mostly just going, hmm, during cutscenes and stuff, because Goto does all the talking. And Goto's voiced by Ray Chase, who has a very deep and nice voice, who also voices, um, what's his name? The Sukuna from Jutsu Kaisen. Ray Chase is a good voice actor, but, um, Billy Komet's voice is Raido, and he sounds awesome in battle. In battle, he'll say the demon's names. Like, he goes, like, Mushuo! And it's awesome. So true. It's really fucking cool. So Raido was an awesome party member. Raido and Dante are functionally the same. They just have, like, different names. Yeah, and they look like different. But they have, like, the exact same stats, and they, um... Have like the exact same abilities, just they look different. So, like, Boogie Woogie is equivalent to, like, Ebony and Ivory on Dante... Um, but neither of us got to play Dante, because we didn't want to spend $10 now, on I him. I wonder, since Vito is like, he's like banned in some country or whatever? He, the only country he's banned in, forget which one it is, one of them lifted, one of them he wasn't banned, Atlas just preemptively didn't cho- chose not to release him. I think it was China, but then the Chinese fans were like, what the fuck? So Atlas released him for free. Yeah, what did it something to do with his uniform and like? Yeah, his patch. uniform is offensive to some countries, but one country he is legitimately banned and he'll never be released in. But I forget which one. Uh, yeah, someone that's else. That's why if but... you get the game on like Steam or something, you have to download the Vito Pack or else you just won't fight Matador. Yeah, you won't. It, you'll play the game as if it was the original Japanese version. There's no Labyrinth of Amala or anything. Which is a neat option that's only on the Steam version, but who would want to do that? Come on, man. Matador being like the first roadblock? Come on. Dude, fucking Hellrider? The fact that I'm pretty sure Christopher Sabat voiced Hellrider, and he's they voiced him like Macho Man Randy Savage. They did a fucking Macho Man Randy <laughs> Savage voice for him. You challenge him, and he's like, Oh, yeah, I'm about to take your manure, brother. What the fuck? The dub for this game is fucking hilarious. I love the dub for this game. I love voice acting, as you can probably tell by our podcast and the way I talk about all this stuff. I love English dubbing. And I mean, the what, dub for this game is quick. awesome. Uh, if, if I watch an anime with you, we watch dubs normally. I can't really recall the time we watched it sub together. We're not dub purists, but if people say it's even, and usually it is nowadays, only old dubs have a chance of being bad, really. Um, I can name, like, most English Yeah, VAs you'll be sitting there and be like, oh, that's Billy Kimetch. Oh, that's your own thought. Oh, and I'm like, dude. <laughs> I oh, that's Johnny Youngbosh. Well, okay, Neil the World ends with you real quick. One of the shopkeepers, I heard him, and I was like, that's Johnny Youngbosh. I, sa- I thought that to myself, like, five hours into the game. Like, 40 hours later, when I finished the game, I was looking at the credits, waiting for it to say additional voice cast. Finally, additional voice cast pops up. Johnny Young Bosch is in it. Go. I'm Johnny a fucking Young genius. Let's I'm a go. god and a prophet. For real. I love English dubbing. But back to Nocturne. Okay. So what's next? Gameplay, DLC, story. Oh, what else is there? I don't I mean, know. I kind of feel game. like we already covered everything. I, I think we have kind of covered everything. Kagatsuchi's a cool boss. To guess about the voice acting more, Jameson Price was an amazing pick for Kagatsuchi because Jameson Price has, like, the coolest sounding voice in the fucking universe. If they dub, like, any Tsukihime Melty Blood stuff ever again, then he should return as Nero Chaos like he was in the Tsukihime anime dub because that dude has a fucking golden voice and it's perfect for Nero Chaos. Jameson Price should be cast in more things because he's a fucking genius and a legend. I feel like maybe... So... Obviously, Tetsukihime... Okay, let's talk about this, <laughs> this Nocturne podcast. This about is it, definitely the Nocturne discuss, guys. It's yeah, definitely so not we just have the Nocturne random shit discuss. They're not going to dub that, probably. 
I don't yeah. think they would. We will talk about Mighty Bullet and Tsukihime. That's probably also going to be a Broski's Discuss. Tsukihime Maybe. Remake comes out in like nine days. If we get that, I don't think they're going to dub it. I think they're No, just, they won't. They yeah, won't. No they, way. I don't think they would. Uh, I, I think the only way we see a Tsukihime dub again is if uh, Youth Audible picked up a Tsukihime, re- blah, 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 Tsukihime Remake anime. That'd be awesome. Because like the dub for the Tsukihime anime had a really fucking good cast, like an underrated cast. When I was reading Tsukihime, in my mind, Roa was like Kirk Thornton to me, his voice. And then in the dub, Kirk Thornton voices Roa. It's like a perfect casting. Jameson Price's Nero Chaos, perfect. Don't worry, you know, guys. When the Tsukihime remake cast. anime comes out in 10 years, Matthew will be the voice director. So fucking true. I'm going to work my way up. Maybe I'll voice Shiki. Sorry, Steve Staley, but I might be replacing you as Tono Shiki next time there's a dub for Tsukihime content. Here's my audition. Hey, guys, it's me, Tono Shiki. I see the lines of death, and I am a rapist.